So we are now going to shift gears away from solving absolute value equations and begin to start to think about solving absolute value inequalities. Now, before we start looking at the formal definition, let's begin by establishing some intuition and thinking about the following two graphical examples. So for the first part, let's begin by considering the absolute value of x being strictly less than two. Now, we say that the solution set for the absolute value of x being strictly less than two is the set of all real numbers, and it should be within two units of zero or the origin on the number line. So coming over here to our number line, our x-axis, we know that we're gonna have an open hole or open circle here at two because x is strictly less than this value. So we could say that x could be any real number from zero to positive two. But don't forget, we also know that negative two is two units away from zero on the x-axis. So we can again draw an open circle here at negative two and x could be any real number that is greater than, strictly greater than negative two. So what is this gonna look like as a solution set? So the solution set for the absolute value of x being strictly less than two is all the real numbers that are strictly greater than negative two, but strictly less than positive two. Now, alternatively, we could write this inequality in its interval form and say that x is an element of the open interval from negative two to positive two. Now, what happens here if we switch the direction of our inequality and consider the absolute value of x being greater than two? So we say that the solution set for the absolute value of x being strictly greater than two is the set of all real numbers that are more than two units away from zero on the x-axis or the number line. So this is the exact op opposite of what we did in case one. Now, if we want the real numbers that are more than two units away, so we know here is exactly two units away, Again, doing an open circle at two because x must be greater than this. Here's the set of all of the x values where x is greater than positive two. And again, don't forget, we know that negative two is also exactly two units away from zero on the x-axis. But we want all of the real numbers that are more than two units away. So in this case, we are shading the x values moving in an infinitely negative direction or where x is strictly less than negative two. So notice how these are two opposites, or the two are opposites of each other. And we have two distinct sets in case two here. So how would we write this as a solution set? So we can say the solution set here for the absolute value of x being greater than two is the set of all x values where again, x is going to be less than, strictly less than negative two, or x is going to be strictly greater than positive two. And if we wanted to write this set notation in interval notation, I can keep these two distinct intervals in mind. We have all of the x values that are strictly less than negative two, or all of the x values are real numbers that are strictly greater than positive two. So as an interval, we would write this and say that x is an element of the interval from negative infinity to negative two, united with that interval from positive two growing towards positive infinity. So now that we've established some intuition for the different types of absolute value inequalities, Let's put this all into a more formal definition for practice. So let's generalize our observations from the previous slide. So to begin, let's let k represent some positive real number. Now, 
as we just saw, we know the absolute value of x being strictly less than a constant, a positive constant k, is equivalent to saying that x is going to be strictly greater than negative k and strictly less than positive k. Now, I want to note the following, that this equivalence property applies to an inequality of the form the absolute value of x is less than or equal to positive k. So an inequality of this form is going to be equivalent to saying that x is greater than or equal to negative k, less than or equal to positive k. So here is our inequality form. And as an interval, this second case would read that x is an element of the closed interval from negative k to positive k. So in this case here, we are including the endpoints, negative k and positive k. Now in case two, if we have the absolute value of x being strictly greater than a positive constant k, we now know that this is equivalent to saying that x is going to be strictly less than negative k, or that x is going to be strictly greater than positive k. And again, just like with case one, this same idea applies if we consider the absolute value of x being greater than or equal to positive k. So this absolute value inequality is equivalent to the two distinct cases where x is less than or equal to negative k or x is greater than or equal to positive k. So again, notice here, we're including the endpoints in these intervals, or, or these inequalities. As an interval, we could say that x is an element of the half-open set from negative infinity up to and including negative k, and we want to unite this with the other half of the interval from positive k and growing towards positive infinity. So now that we have generalized how to solve these two different forms of absolute value inequalities, let's go ahead and practice this with the following examples. 